Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Julian Sands? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Julian Richard Morley Sands was born on January 4, 1958, in the town of Otley, England. He grew up in Gargrave, which is about 20 miles west of Otley. His mother participated in amateur theater, which inspired Julian to become an actor. He appeared in his first play at the age of six. Julian went to college to study the dramatic arts, but he dropped out. He started acting in 1983. Throughout his career, Julian appeared in movies and on television. He mostly had small roles and supporting roles, although he was the lead actor a few times. Some of his better-known films include The Killing Fields in 1984, the 1985 film A Room with a View, Gothic in 1986, and the 1995 movie Leaving Las Vegas. Julian played a lot of expressive, mysterious, and memorable characters, he was often favored for his tall and gaunt appearance, which made him a natural fit for roles in horror movies. Even though Julian never became a megastar, he was quite active and well-respected. In addition to being an actor, Julian was an experienced mountaineer. He had climbed many different mountains in Europe and had a particular affinity for Mount Baldy near Los Angeles, California. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On January 13, 2023, 65-year-old Julian Sands went hiking on Mount Baldy in the San Gabriel Mountains northeast of Los Angeles. At 7.30 p.m. that same day, he was reported missing by his wife after failing to return home from the hike. His cell phone last pinged from a ridge on the Baldy Bowl Trail. This is a remote, icy, and dangerous ridge beneath the summit of the mountain. There were storms in the area right after he went missing, which impeded the search effort. On January 18, five days after he went missing, his vehicle was found, but there was still no sign of Julian. Many people assumed he was dead. On January 25, one of Julian's brothers said, quote, I have come to terms with the fact he's gone, and for me, that's how I've dealt with it, unquote. On January 26, another one of Julian's brothers said, quote, he has not yet been declared missing, presumed dead, but I know in my heart that he's gone. However, sibling rivalry, being what it is, it would be just like him to walk out of there and prove me wrong, unquote. The search continued for many months, but there was still no sign of Julian Sands. By June of 2023, there had been eight official search and rescue missions without any success. Some areas could not be searched on foot, because they were simply too dangerous. Some of the terrain was covered by over 10 feet of ice and snow. On June 24, 2023, a group of hikers started climbing Mount Baldy and entered a place called Good Canyon. Most hikers avoid this canyon as it is not the safest area on the mountain. The hikers were aware that Julian Sands had disappeared on the mountain and they were familiar with the area where his cell phone last pinged. They thought it was likely that he ended up in Good Canyon. About three and a half hours into their journey, the hikers entered a flat spot that was at 8,400 feet. One of the hikers saw a boot in the brush. It was hard to see. Another hiker had passed right by it without noticing it. A few yards away, the hikers found another boot. Eventually, they found human bones, trekking poles, a cell phone, and a pile of winter clothing. In a pocket, they found a wallet containing the driver's license of Julian Sands. The hikers notified the authorities using a satellite communicator. Three days later, the human remains were positively identified as belonging to Julian Sands. His cause of death was ruled undetermined, which is fairly common in these types of cases. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Mount Baldy is not considered the most dangerous mountain in the United States, 
but it has had its fair share of fatalities. Its highest elevation is only about 10,000 feet, but the conditions on the mountain can be quite hazardous. For example, there's a lot of snow, ice, and wind. In addition, it can get very cold. Mount Baldy is close to Los Angeles, and many residents gaze upon it on a regular basis. It's clearly not as intimidating as Denali or Mount St. Elias. Residents of the city may tend to think of the mountain as friendly or peaceful. They view it as a gentle giant who would never harm them, instead of as a bad actor, not unlike some of those in Hollywood. This creates a false sense of security. The mountain doesn't earn enough respect for its lethal capabilities. Julian Sands appeared to be quite familiar with Mount Baldy. In 2013, he said, quote, I must have been up Mount Baldy about 200 times, so I think this is a real favorite, and I like it in winter. Winter conditions make it a bit more interesting, unquote. Item number two, Julian Sands did not appear to be particularly well prepared for the conditions on Mount Baldy, despite having a lot of experience climbing. He was there prior to the storm, which later impeded the search effort, but even so, he placed himself in a difficult position. A few examples, Julian was carrying a cell phone, but in that area, there is no reception. He was not carrying a satellite communicator, like the one that was used by the hikers who found his remains. Julian was wearing all black clothing. One hiker said he was like a ninja. He was not wearing anything red, orange, or yellow. This meant that he was hard to spot. Aircraft crew members who were searching for him were at a disadvantage. Julian was hiking alone. A lot of people do this on Mount Baldy and in other hazardous areas, but it's not the safest practice, especially without having a way to communicate with emergency services. Julian had micro spikes on his shoes. These are sets of metal spikes that attach to shoes to assist with traction. The spikes are about three-eighths of an inch long. They are fine for ice and snow conditions on flat terrain, but crampons may have been a better choice for the area where Julian was hiking. These traction devices have longer spikes and are considered more appropriate for icy, high-angle slopes. In addition to footwear issues, Julian did not appear to have an ice axe, a helmet, or a backpack. Item number three, what happened to Julian Sands? No one knows for sure. What transpired that day remains shrouded in uncertainty. I think it is reasonable to believe that he died as a result of something that went wrong on the mountain. There is no indication that Julian went hiking in order to bring an end to his own life or anything like that. Rather, he must have encountered some type of accident. Some people believe that he may have fallen into Good Canyon. He was not properly equipped to stop his fall or to climb out. It's also possible he was caught in an avalanche, which pushed him into the canyon. He could have become disoriented and ended up in the canyon by mistake. Another possibility is that he died somewhere other than the canyon, and his body was moved by water from melting snow. I think the most likely scenario is that he hiked or fell into the canyon and became trapped. He had no way to communicate with rescuers, so there was nothing he could do. Julian died a horrible and agonizing death as the storm came in. Item number four, was Julian's job as an actor connected to his death? I have covered a lot of cases where the pitfalls of the entertainment industry lead to an actor's death. For example, an actor is extremely successful and all their needs are getting met. They don't know what to do to find new pleasurable experiences, so they turn to substances. They excessively use substances and no one interferes because they surrounded themselves with people who are afraid to tell them no. Ultimately, the substances cause their death. Despite this being a familiar scenario with actors, this is not what happened in the case of Julian Sands. There is no indication that his career was tied to his death in any way. I think he was simply not well prepared and something went wrong on the hike. It's possible that his career is what led him to being in Los Angeles at that time, but he would climb mountains in many different areas around the world. He didn't die specifically because he was in Los Angeles. Item number five. The main lesson in this case is that mountaineering can be dangerous Therefore, it's critical to be prepared. Areas that are familiar can seem less dangerous. Maybe that's what happened here.
perhaps the vast experience that Julian had with Mount Baldy is actually what led to the problem. He felt too comfortable with his ability to navigate the mountain. This phenomenon can occur with anything that's dangerous, whether it's terrain, a machine, or a relationship. No matter how familiar a person is with something hazardous, the object remains just as lethal. Now moving to my final thoughts. Even though being an actor didn't cause Julian Sands to die, I think his status as an actor can make a significant contribution to the safety of others. His death on the mountain will draw attention to the critical nature of being prepared. During his career, Julian was one of those actors who was frequently in movies and on television, but not many viewers knew his name. He was always in the background, playing a secondary but indispensable role. In the end, Julian Sands now takes center stage as a symbol of the importance of respecting the forces of nature. His final act was a somber reminder to honor the majesty and the dangerousness of the mountain that he loved. Those are my thoughts on the case of Julian Sands. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.